And here we have a quite different piece, which is actually the arterial supply of the brain. And while it's placed in such a way that we are looking downwards on it, the most important arteries for the blood supply of the brain are the ones at the base, kind of hidden from our view, in the polygon or circle of Willis. Here from the back we can see both vertebral arteries joining together into the basilar artery. From it will arise the posterior cerebral arteries, which roughly supply the posterior parts of the telencephalon or cerebrum. Meanwhile, in the front, in a very simplified version, the internal carotid arteries are branching off into the anterior cerebral arteries for the medial parts of the brain and the middle cerebral arteries for the lateral parts of the brain. And the circle of Willis, as most anastomoses, naturally occurring connections between blood vessels, is meant for redundancy, providing a backup pathway for blood to flow if an artery is ever occluded. Because if the blood supply is ever blocked for long enough to a region of the brain, you get an ischemic stroke. Naturally, as it mentions here, you could also have a hemorrhagic stroke when blood leaks into the parenchyma. Now, when I was in medical school, I found this to be a bit unintuitive, because why exactly would a hemorrhage prevent the brain from performing its normal functions? Of course, if it compresses it, for example, then of course, it can damage nearby areas. But why would a hemorrhagic stroke cause damage? And the truth is that blood is leaking into the brain parenchyma. The brain parenchyma is meant to have many things. It's meant to have cells, it's meant to have extracellular fluid. What the brain parenchyma is not meant to have between the cells is blood. So that naturally disrupts the natural communication between the cells. 